Lizette Melendez, freestyle legend here in our studio. Thank you, thank you. And, you know, I feel like your song, Together Forever, you know, that's like a message that we really want to put out because it's the first time that we're doing a KT Euphoria in, what, three years? Um, it, it feels so special also to celebrate 25 years of KTU. Can you believe? I mean, that went, that just flew by. I know. Time is going by too fast. And that's one thing I got to say. You could never buy time, you know, so every moment is precious. Like, you know, you have to enjoy every second. And, you know, it just sounds like cliche. And it's true. You know, I'm, I'm at a point now that I just want to take every moment and just enjoy. You know, you can't get 25 years ago. I know. Like, who who would have ever, you know. And I've crazy. been here for like a bunch of that. I don't want to say how long. But, you know, this this is a legendary heritage radio station. And it's um, it really is something special because I feel like the listeners, the personalities, the support staff, everybody's like a big family. The artists, right? Yeah. What would you say is your favorite K2 memory? Just, you know, to be honest, li just listening to all the music, you know, and I remember when the f when the station first started 25 years ago, you know, I was just so amazed and so surprised and then excited, everything in one, because the transition in music from 1990 to 1995 is pretty big. Oh, yeah. You know, 1990, a nice segue that I will get into is no one liked Together Forever. So when we shot that record Wait, around, what? nobody liked it. So I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, from my vocal to my name, we tried to change my name. Um, I couldn't think of anything. We couldn't find anything. Nobody liked it because it didn't sound like any other freestyle record. It, it, people are funny like that. Sometimes yeah. when you hear something new, it's like, okay, I'm yeah. not sure how to process this. But, you know, I just want to back up a little bit. You are a local girl, so you have been familiar with KTU since the launch. And, you know, the first song that we ever played here, CNC Music Factory, Gonna Make You Sweat. You yes. know, freestyle's yeah. a little bit different. I mean, I don't, I don't want to, like, lump it all in the same the same uh, box here but you know you grew up listening to like lisa lisa and other freestyle artists like what made you choose the freestyle path for yourself um when i first heard lisa lisa uh i there was a resemblance there you know she was a latin girl she you know she looked like i resembled her um and at that time there was no other artist that resembled or uh, that was a latin besides gloria estefan there was really no other artist out there that was a young youthful um fun you know relatable song so when i heard that it inspired me you know just to step outside my box i was so shy growing up really you know, i was super shy i really wanted to start you know going out there and and singing in front of people when i was 12. But I just couldn't do it. It's funny. You're not the only one who has told me this. I recently sat down with Coro, who told me that he also was a little bit shy right. getting into things. So it's it's interesting to see that, like, you have these shy kids who love the music so much and, like, kind of struggle with the idea of going on a stage. But did you start off as, like, a background singer? Like, how did, um, how did you kind of dip your toe into the performing pool? Well... We, we, um, I met someone named Tomex and he had a, a boy girl, like he wanted to create a band kind of, um, a, two boy, two guys, a girl. Um, so here I am. I came in, I met him and I, we started rehearsing in Brooklyn. I used to take the J train all the way to Brooklyn <laughs> from Spanish Harlem and we rehearsed. Um, and then from there, he knew a DJ named Carlos Berrios that had a, you know, a, a place in Queens. So I, we said, you know what, let's audition for, for Carlos, when we auditioned, we sounded like alley cats. It, what? There, was no, no. Uh, there was no harmonies. We all looked different. There was no unison. We, we were just horrible. Um, but that's how I met Carlos. And eventually, you know, we split up. Tomax ended up writing a record called Make Noise. I came in. I did a vocal on the record. Um, it was featured, you know, it's After Dark, rec After Dark featuring Lizette Melendez. And that record was a big you know, DJ kind of record because it was very New York. And then from there, DJ started playing it. I started performing, you know, on the New York City circuit. And I just wanted that next record, a, a fresh new record, because Make Noise was just a very small little piece that I had a vocal on. So, so you, got a, you short, got a taste of it and you I wanted got, more. Yeah, I needed a real song. So we looked for like a year or two, demoed a whole bunch of songs and nothing was... Nothing was it, you know, until 
Carlos ended up producing a record, and it wasn't even for me. It was for another artist, and it was actually for a guy. Interesting. And, yeah, very interesting. And the record was called Together Forever. So I said, let me demo. Carlos, you know, said, try to demo the song so he could learn it. And the key was a little different because freestyle, the keys were a little higher. You know, yeah. it was very, you Did know. they have to change it because it was originally no, set for someone else? No, they changed it. They kept, you know, the keys the way it was. And, and I came in and I delivered the vocal. And when we heard it, it was like, wow. So you said it had a little bit of a slow start. When did it catch on? And when, when, at, what was that moment for you when you were like, oh my gosh, they like me. Yeah. They really like me. Well, when it finally was released, they tested it on the radio station and it tested, you know, great. And they started playing it little by little before you knew it, it caught fire. All the stations started picking up on it. Um, and I was just, I went from, I was already rehearsed. I rehearsed for a whole year before that record came out. So we were just waiting, you know, and and it just took off. And it came out at a time when freestyle was already on its way. Pretty much people lost interest because everything, to be honest, started sounding the same. And it just had a, a Well, I very think you were rapid... also like fighting the grunge movement too. You had a lot going on. And then a couple of years later, you had like the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and they were all battling it out. So it's like, like you said before, the music really changes but I think now we're starting to see a lot of people showing interest again in the 90s and look at look at Kate Bush from Stranger Things like the songs back on the billboard charts wow. because of a TV show right. so what do you think that that sort of thing could happen for you or some of the other freestyle artists out there I mean when you look at the commercials that are out now like the Doritos commercials different commercials you have Return of the Mac you know that song that oh yeah it's a throwback Mark but Morrison it has, it has nothing to do with you know with Doritos but you, you, anything's possible. I believe anything's possible with the right person. That it takes one person to believe and hear certain things, and and if that happens, that'll be great. One person that goes through that door now, it opens the door for all of us. Um, and like I said, when we re we released together forever, freestyle was on its way out, you know, and it gave it a new heartbeat. And it opened up the doors again for us to do it, you know, a few more years. And look at this, 25 years and later, 25 we're all years... still doing it and we're getting on stage. Any surprises in store for us at k 24 e Anything you can let us know about? Anything you want to tease? Energy. <laughs> all I can say, it's going to be a lot of energy. Um, crowd participation, hopefully. Um, oh, I will be on that yacht drinking hand, just screaming. I'm going to lose my voice. I'm just letting you know. I'm going to be screaming along to your well, song. Good, good. You have to be there. So we're, we're looking for a lot of energy and... Just you know, just to give the crowd a little bit of um, a little bit of information as to how songs came about. You know, I don't have a lot of time on stage, but I'm gonna segue from one song to the other nicely, and I hope people love it. You know, um, I'm gonna do a song called Rise that I wrote a couple of years ago. Um, it's about um, just emotional, you know, um, abuse, physical abuse um, that we've all endured in one shape or the other. So it's kind of a message. I'm gonna do a little snippet of that as well. Um, and of course, we're going to do a day in my life and together forever. So it's going to be awesome. We are so wait. excited to see you. Lizette Melendez, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Mm, see you Saturday. Love.